basically, so I went to a sleep seminar. I wanted to vlog it, which I did, but once I got in there and I was learning so much in the lecture, I actually didn't see the benefit of filming. I saw the benefit of listening and making notes. So when we were in there, we got given like this big folder um, to make lots of notes. And we also got given um, pictures of the slides that they were going through. So what I did was I kind of summarized my notes for you and I wanted to read them out so we could kind of summarize like why I went to the sleep seminar, what did I learn, why I think sleep is important and if you are struggling with sleep then I wanted to give you some recommendations of what I learned at this lecture. So why did I go? Lack of sleep is becoming an epidemic and whether you have eczema or not, sleep is so, so important for your health. Without sleep, you can't really heal. I remember five years ago when I was really struggling with my eczema and I was severely lacking in sleep. It was making my mindset foggy and negative. My skin wasn't healing and I didn't realize um, just how important it was. And once I did start sleep five years ago, that is when my eczema really started to heal. So sleep for me is one of the key components into healing your eczema. So as soon as I found out there was a sleep seminar going on, um, I knew I had to go and I knew I had to get up to date with everything and just share all this information with you guys. I learned that if your body isn't sleeping, it's trying to tell you something is wrong. And that seems pretty simple, but most of us ignore it. Most of us blame ourselves. Oh, why am I not sleeping? No, your body is trying to tell you that there's either too much inflammation in your body or that you're struggling with some emotional trauma. Something is wrong if you're not sleeping and we need to get it right. Sleep works best when we have a routine. So it's really good to go to bed at a certain time every night and wake up at the same time every morning. You need that sort of routine and rhythm. I also learned that it's important to eat at certain times of the day and the same times every day because rhythm really helps your body um, get a better sleep hygiene. You can't catch up on lost sleep. That kind of made me a little bit sad. So if you're lacking sleep from Monday to Friday and you have a lie-in on Saturday and you think you're catching up on the sleep you missed during the week, you're kidding yourself, which I have been doing. So you can't catch up on lost sleep and actually sleeping in on the weekend is messing up the rhythm of your sleep pattern. So it's much better to have a healthy sleep pattern Monday to Sunday and keep your body in that routine. I learned that REM sleep, which stands for rapid eye movement and dreaming sleep helps us process trauma. Whatever emotional thing we might have gone through, actually sleeping in in the um, early hours of the morning, so not waking up too early, helps us process any emotional trauma we've gone through and heal any emotional upset. So if you're waking at five in the morning, you're actually not giving your body or mind that time to process any emotional healing. I learned that if you want more physical healing, then sleeping earlier um, into the evening is best. So sleeping from around like eight and nine o'clock, those hours up until midnight are when you you physically heal your body. So if you're going to bed after midnight, you're again depriving your body of that physical healing. What I learned as well was that wounds made in the night are more likely to heal much slower than wounds made in the daytime. And a lot of people were like, yeah, but you know, who's who, how are you gonna hurt yourself in the night? Like you're asleep, you know, we're not um, animals anymore in historic times, we're not gonna get like eaten by a tiger. But then I put my hand and said, well, you know, eczema sufferers, we scratch in the middle of the night, is that why it takes our wounds longer to heal? And the lecturer said, you've hit the nail on the head, Camille. Yes, you're right. So when we scratch as eczema sufferers, it'll take our body much longer to heal that wound because it was caused during a time that the body would think that it wouldn't naturally get attacked. So why is sleep good for us? It basically, it enriches our learning, so it helps our skills become subconscious. If you're reading a book or if you learn about something and then you go to sleep quite soon after, apparently it becomes quite subconscious. So a lot of people um, like visualize exactly how they want their life to be right before bed, so then they fall asleep on it, become subconscious, and they do those things that they wanted or those skills that they wanted to amplify. It enriches memory, creativity, emotional stability, immune function, 
blood glucose control, appetite and body weight, that's important. Apparently you cannot lose weight and you can gain weight even if you've got the perfect exercise and diet plan, if you are not sleeping, you're more likely to gain weight because your body's more likely to be hungrier and you are less likely to have the um, body signal when you're full. So yeah, if you are burning exercise and eating perfectly but you are not sleeping, sleep is the number one important thing that you need to do if you want to gain control of your body weight. Sleep also encourages a healthy gut microbe and if you've got a healthy gut microbe, Probe, you're more likely to have like a um, clear mind and clear skin. Apparently 70% of your immune system is in your gut, so we want a healthy gut, guys. Yeah, so as I mentioned earlier, the body heals best in the first stages of the sleep, and in the second stages, that is when your emotions are healed, in a sense. Sleeping is good to reduce inflammation, which is not good for the body, so we want to sleep more. And research suggests that 60% amplification in emotional reactivity of participants were those that were sleep deprived. And lack of sleep implicated psychiatric illnesses such as depression, anxiety, and suicidal thoughts. So catching up on sleep is really, really important, not just to physically be well, but to mentally be well. Some of you out there will be thinking, ah, but I don't sleep very well. Now I'm panicking, you've told me, what's going to happen if I don't sleep, my body's not healing, my emotions aren't healing and trust me I get it because I went through a stage in my life where I could not sleep and it is it's traumatizing because you are physically exhausted and mentally exhausted and that kind of annoys me when people say oh just wear yourself out and then you'll sleep. These are people that have never um, suffered lack of sleep. But I've come up with some top tips to make sure that you get a better night's sleep and number one tip was remove the stress around falling asleep. Do not panic that you are not sleeping if you are not sleeping, okay? I know it seems silly, but the panic is worse. The best thing you can do if you're not sleeping is lie in bed, close your eyes, and just relax. Because even if you don't fall asleep, just that state of relaxation is powerfully healing. Tip number two is Write down your worries and then leave them until the morning, okay? So if you're like, mind's going crazy, and you're like, oh, I need to sort it out, I need to sort it out, write it all down, write a list, and then pop it to the side and go, I'm gonna deal with that tomorrow when I'm more emotionally and physically well, okay? Because we're all so tempted to be like, no, I'm gonna deal with this tonight, I wanna get out of the way, no. You're gonna make a much better job of whatever's on your worry list once you've had a good night's sleep. Tip number three, take a hot bath and pamper yourself. I say this a lot, but having a hot bath with Epsom salts, which is magnesium, will help relax the body. Put some lavender oil in there as well. All of those are like very relax relaxing and that will prepare you for a good restful night's sleep. It also helps um, warm the inside of your body and cool down the outside so that you're yeah, more likely to have a more comfortable night's sleep. Tip number four, walk outdoors in the morning. Try and get as much daylight before you get to work and that fresh air, that's gonna help you sleep better in the evening. Five, get blackout blinds. You want it to be really dark in your room and you want it to be peaceful. So if it's not peaceful, get earplugs. If it's not dark, get an eye mask. Or if you're in hotel rooms where there's really annoying like little blue lights or things somewhere which I find someone in the lecture room came up with a really really useful tip. Carry blue tack and pop the blue tack on all these little annoying lights and it will black out the room. So that's something I took from the lecturer and I'm really excited to try that next time in the hotel room because when I forget my eye mask that is a good idea. Tip number six, do some yoga, meditation or light reading before bed. Get rid of your iPhone, your computer, your TV, you do not want to be on those, you know, screens before bed. Read, meditate, do some yoga. Seven, intermittent fasting is proven to um, support some people with sleep problems. And by intermittent fasting, uh, intermittent fasting, I mean having a break from eating food from between 14 to 16 hours. It seems like a long time. For example, if you stopped eating at 6 p.m. in the evening and then you didn't eat till 10 p.m. Um, 10 a.m. the next day, that's normally most of the time you'll be in bed asleep. So you won't realize you're not eating and having that break for the digestive system digestive systems really good for your gut microbe and really good for um 
encouraging sleep but that works for some people other people actually sleep better if they have some complex carbs before bed like um, a banana or some oatmeal so everybody's different just see what works for you another tip um, would be to take some supplements that support a restful night's sleep before taking the supplements always make sure you get qualified um, advice from somebody don't just diagnose yourself and and yeah just basically make sure you ask like a naturopathic nutritionist or someone qualified to um, recommend the exact su supplements that you should take I personally love to take a magnesium supplement at night I feel like it really relaxes my body and I feel like it's absorbed better in a powder so I take natural calm natural calm this one actually also has calcium in, vitamin C, vitamin D, potassium and I wanted to get an overall alkalizing powder um, and because it's got the magnesium in there as well I just feel that this is going to benefit me. Also it's been shown that tart cherry juice, like really highly concentrated, helps you relax and have a restful night's sleep. And I have actually found that this works for me. Firstly it tastes incredible and I really do believe in it gives me a better night's sleep. Finally, my little thing that was squished in my bag. We were given these at the seminar. I don't know how to pronounce them, so l -thenine. Yeah, so hopefully you can see that. And I'm just gonna flip to my notes of why that is a good supplement to take. That's something we got given as a gift. So apparently, this supplement is similar to meditation. It increases the alpha brain wave activity, relaxation, um, increases relaxation and reduces anxiety. A similar mechanism to the effects of meditation, works without drowsiness or impairing flexes or concentration, and increases serotonin and dopamine, and increases learning and memory. So that's super exciting. I am um, gonna start taking these and see how how they help me, I'm only going to take them if I'm feeling stressed or anxious. So a few more things if you're struggling with sleep would be commit two months to that routine that I said, going to sleep at the same time, waking up at the same time, eating at the same time. Commit to that schedule for two months and watch your sleep change. That is what they said in the lecture, so I'm going to try that. They said instead of just setting an alarm to wake up, set an alarm to go to bed to make sure you don't miss that slot. Also, I found personally five years ago when I couldn't sleep, it was a lot of um, mental stress going on in my life. And I found speaking to a qualified NLP practitioner, neuro-linguistic reprogrammer, or there is a con cognitive behavioral therapist. I felt like when they, once they unpicked my mind and released all the worries that I had in my head, I was able to sleep at night. So that might may be a benefit to you if you feel like you need to let some mental stresses off your chest. Finally, if you are really struggling to sleep, apparently there are sleep clinics available by the NHS now. That was part of the lecture as well. So that's really interesting to know that there are places you can go for professional sleep support because it is so important. A lot of people in today's society have this saying like, sleep when you're dead. And people seem to think, oh, I work harder than you because I hardly sleep. This really bothers me because, you know, like the lecture said and like a book that I'm reading said, which I'll tag in the link below, is that when you have good sleep hygiene, you are more on the ball for longer and can contribute to the world longer. I am one of those people that want to make a huge difference in this world. I want my work to succeed. I want to be an amazing family member, friend, girlfriend. I used to push myself to the point where I'd hardly sleep and then my eczema would flare up, I'd feel not on form mentally or physically, and I realized that I needed to sleep to benefit and fill up my cup in order to pour out onto, to, onto others. I do not believe you sleep when you're dead. I believe you sleep now to be a better person, to contribute more to the world. So if you're one of those people that are thinking, I don't wanna sleep, I don't wanna miss out on things, um, Actually, this world needs you to sleep so you can give a better version of yourself to it. But I've really enjoyed sharing it with you. I love learning new topics that benefit our health and especially eczema. And I love sharing them with you guys. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Hope it's benefited you. If it has, please leave me a comment below. If you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up. And 
please hit that subscribe button so you can see more videos that I bring out. So yeah, hope you've enjoyed it guys. I'm sending lots and lots of love to you as always and I'll speak to you soon. Bye!